Hi, my name is Eric uh, Kaf Boulian. Uh, I'm the screenwriter and the co-screenwriter and co-producer of the movie Prank. It was uh, the, the the director Vincent Biron had uh, went with a bunch of friends to do uh, pranks on uh, an April Fool's Day. So yeah, he went with a camera with his friend and he recorded those pranks because uh, some friends had a YouTube channel where uh, they were making pranks. So he had lots of fun and for him it was like uh, he felt uh, kind of feeling of youth, something uh, fun. So he had this idea to, um, to, to make a movie with a young prankster, but also he wanted to um, show the, the, the life of the people who were, um, who were the victims of the prank. So we had this uh, kind of concept where we would follow the four main characters who are doing pranks in a more linear w way, in fact, in a more classic storytelling. But then you would uh, stop the movie sometimes to go on a, with another character who's becoming a victim of a prank. So it was uh, his concept at first and then he approached us uh, some of his friends to write the screenplay with him because he wanted to write it quick because uh, so he wrote the script in like a month and a half because uh, we wanted to shoot fast uh, yeah well the shooting was uh, a year and a half because uh, yeah but we really took our time so sometimes the a day of shooting would be only like four hours because we only make a scene this day uh, th that day with the with the actors, it was really a free, um, free set because we were only uh, three people, on the, three or four people in the set. Like uh, Vincent is a cinematographer, so he was making the camera. One of the co-producer was making the sound. I was there to help them, so it was really a small crew, really, really small crew, more like a documentary crew. And uh, it was all uh, natural lights, so um, we didn't have a big crew, so. We took our time with uh, with the actor trying to trying some stuff, just having fun. Uh, base it was based on the screenplay, but uh, he took some liberties uh, with uh, the places he was shooting, with uh, the costumes, with uh, with all that. So sometimes it was so he took a it was like 30, 31 days of shooting, but on a one and a half year period. Uh, so. The, the main character is uh, an actor which uh, I worked with on a short film uh, before. It was called Petit Frère. So I knew him and I suggested him to, uh, to Vincent and he, he loved it. He's a, he's a great actor and he's fun to shoot with. So this one was really, uh, was already uh, cast. So, and for the other, we made a casting call. Uh, with, uh, so we call some agency and like we're, we're looking for a young actors who are available for free on the weekends when they can. So it was kind of, not everybody wanted to, to do it, but uh, so we make some audition and uh, Vincent was a cinematographer on another short film where he, uh, he worked with uh, Constance, the, the girl in the movie. So he knew her a bit, so she, he asked her to come do the, the test. So um, yeah, it was uh, like a mix between uh, people we knew and people we uh, saw in audition. And uh, all the, the other actors, the, play, the, the, the people who are playing the, the victim of the pranks and all that, those are all friends. So usually, yeah, it's all public fun, but for prank, we decided to not go that way because uh, it would have been too long and there'd probably be a risk that uh, they would just refuse to give us money because it's not the kind of movie you saw most you, you see mostly in Quebec. I mean, the, even the fact that it's a comedy, comedy is rare in Quebec. There's a comedy, but it's a big comedy movie. Uh, so, and for a first-time filmmaker, I think we, we thought it would be too hard to get the money and too long, so we said, no, no, let's... Let's shoot this movie before we're 30 because we wanted to have a feature film before 30 years old. So um, yeah, so we, we, we just funded the movie ourselves with uh, not a lot of money, but uh, enough to make the film. We shoot uh, mostly around Montreal in the suburbs. It was also shoot, shot uh, near uh, Vincent's hometown. 
uh, it was in Sorel Tracy, a small place where there's the, the bridge in the movie, that's where we shot it. So about an hour and a half from Montreal. So mostly suburbs and uh, area and small city uh, around Montreal. We asked permission. Uh, we just went, uh, if we, we needed a church, so we just asked the church and we shoot there. And people were kind of nice and they let us shoot about anywhere. I, I don't recall uh, any problems that we had. And so, but it was sometimes it was also really fast. But on the bridge, uh, we could have been uh, arrested or just come. To the, but we we took the chance. It's just when you do that kind of production, it's all, it's guerrilla style. So you just go and you hope everything goes well. And uh, if not, you, you you roll with the punches and you, you you find something else. I don't know, but we were lucky. That's what we were trying to convey just a sense of uh, youth where you just looking for stuff to do where you're just uh, you're fooling around you're 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 trying to find yourself also you're just to, you don't really you don't know yet who you are and what you want to be so it, you're uh, you're kind of in a nowhere space so and for those characters the, the the way they they, they they're trying to, to to make stuff is by doing pranks which is kind of nothing but it's their thing i guess also uh, the thing that was um was common in our um in our crew is that everyone uh, found out when they were young about their passion for cinema so that's uh, another thing that we tried to uh, to put in the movie the the, the character of jean sebastien who's uh who's talking about those movies he saw and uh, his affection for 80s action flicks and all that. It was, a, it was really us when we were young and we were beginning to have a cinematic culture. So we... Uh, the Bellator first, uh, the, the Cheval de Turin, the Turin Horse. Uh, it was, we really wanted to put the character in front of something big, bigger than themselves. Something they were smoking weeds and something that they couldn't understand because it was really far from their reality and just it was kind of a cinematic kind of movie you don't watch often when you're young and if you you watch it you just say what the what the heck is that so we choose uh, the cheval the turn horse because we found it funny that they would smoke weed and watch that movie for the other movies predator and uh, uh, Islander and uh, Die Hard, and it, it's just movies that we like. It's, we're we're big fans of uh, American action. Our first film that we saw was American films because we're so close, and they have uh, this big giant thing that is American cinema and United States cinema. So the first movie we watched when we were kids were was that. So I saw Predator when I was young. I saw Die Hard when I was young. So. It was all the film that we recall uh, having seen when we were young and that made an impression on us that we, uh, we and sometimes we were, that's what we do when we're in a group and we say, oh, you remember that movie? Yeah, and, uh, and then it comes with a, a sword and he chops his head and was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. So that was, uh, that was some, just, we, we took movies that, uh, that we liked and we wanted to talk about and we wanted to have to be, yeah, show what we like. First, we didn't even thought that we'd be shown in Mexico because, uh, and it's a great opportunity in at uh, this Cineteca, which is so great. And, uh, I love this place. So I, I didn't even know that we were gonna end up in Mexico. So now I don't know if somebody sees it and wanted to show it <laughs> another place. That would be great, but it's something I don't have power on. But uh, I don't know. It's hard to say. It's not a uh, because. We don't have the resources and we don't have the contacts in Mexico, so I don't, I don't know the, any distributor in Mexico, so I don't know. <laughs> the reception I, it's pretty good. I think uh, people, can, people can relate to uh, this movie because everybody was young. <laughs> everybody was, I don't know if anybody made pranks, but everybody loves to have fun, I guess. So the, the reception is kind of great, which is... What is really uh, interesting to see is that in every country we've shown it, 
it's not at every uh, jokes that it's laugh and it's not the the reaction are bigger at some points in the movie depending on in which countries we are sometimes people laugh at another place and they don't laugh at that place so it's fun to see where the people are reacting and uh, if people are reacting so i'm always uh, it's always fun to see uh, the reaction of the the people uh, when I have the same culture, so it's and see if the the, the 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 teams that are universal in the in the movie. So it's it's, it's fun to see uh, when it it uh, it can reach an audience even uh, even in Mexico. So I don't know. I hope people will will laugh tonight. <laughs> I, I I hope. But usually they have fun. I guess. If you want to have fun and just see a movie about. Prankster. <laughs> uh, there will be another showing of Prank on the February 11th, so at the Cineteca. So come see it.